this whole regional partnership, which is the umbrella under which it's done, has turned out to be one of the, uh, I think, most uh, amazing things I've seen in over 30 years in the government in terms of uh, attracting interest, in terms of attracting partners. Well over 300 uh, organizations are participating across the country. And uh, it's, it's all the right people. It's the companies, it's the state government, it's the researchers. And so I think we've positioned ourselves pretty well. This is really one of our first field site visits under the Midwest Partnership. This is just one of the uh, concepts that we have under this partnership effort. We have the geologic and we also have the terrestrial. And I think the terrestrial is very important because it's a natural process. And I think with wetlands and croplands, the abandoned mine lands and forest and prairie efforts here, it gives you an idea of how the CO2 is naturally taken up by the vegetation. Uh, tidal marshes have among the highest carbon sequestration rates of, of any terrestrial ecosystem. Uh, very rapid growing forests will be somewhat similar, but of course you have to, once those trees reach maturity, that's no longer going to be sequestering carbon. So tidal marshes are somewhat unique in that really into perpetuity, they will be forever sequestering carbon as long as, as long as they exist, which is the problem that we're losing so many tidal marshes that we're losing this potential. So to, we need to restore them in order to regain that potential. Well, we did a pilot demonstration wetland restoration project in 2003 when we restored 15 acres of marsh using on-site dredge material. Also back in the 1980s, we did another project where we restored 12 acres, but we're hopeful that the Maryland Port Administration will provide us with clean dredge material from the approach channels to the Port of Baltimore so we can restore somewhere on the order of 11,000 acres here at the refuge and as much as 20,000 acres throughout Dorchester County. Tidal marshes are, uh, are really perfect for carbon sequestration in terms of terrestrial systems in that there's very high net primary productivity, so there's a lot of carbon being photosynthesized, which means that there's a high photosynthesis rate, lots of carbons coming in from the atmosphere. And since the soils are so saturated, there's very low decomposition rates, so that carbon stays in the system. And best of all, since sea levels are rising, the soil itself is growing in volume every year, and so that's a lot of carbon that's staying in the system, and that's how we end up with carbon sequestration. Well, the larger restoration would be uh, you know, a very significant uh, tidal marsh restoration. Tidal marshes are very important habitats for uh, birds, waterfowl, uh, aquatic life, uh, water quality of the Chesapeake Bay. So uh, a restoration of this magnitude would have an enormous effect on the local economy uh, and the local environment. And uh, you know, it's a, it's a national uh, refuge, so of course people across the country would be uh, interested in visiting. And uh, to maintain this, we need to do this restoration or, or we're potentially going to lose this important national treasure. <laughs>